I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Hello and welcome back. Um, that sounded ominous, didn't it? <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Um, this is the chassis, the uh, 10H20Z chassis. It's recapped completely now. Um, I've I've mounted the two uh, two um, wire wound resistors under the under the rail here, um, and unless they show some problem there from overheating. That's where they'll stay. I'm still waiting for the correct uh, audio output transformer. It's on its way. I've added a fuse holder. I'm also waiting for a couple of caps to go into. You may or may not recall, this chassis has two sets of filter caps uh, to clean up the AC. Uh, one is for the primary power supply and chassis. This one is for the uh, phonograph part of uh, of this radio. Um, so I am re-stuffing re this cap. Here it is. I've got the innards out, um, waiting for a couple of uh, specially sized caps to fit in there. There's a 20 and a 40, 20 at 350 and a 40 at 450. Um, so anyway, waiting for those and I've done about all I can do here. Uh, I've got a um, X cap I'm going to put in. They're called safety caps, but that's only one purpose for these guys. These are to uh, also bleed off some of the noise that can come in or on, the, on the power line. So it's a dual function uh, capacitor. That's its primary use, in fact. Uh, the safety part comes in when uh, they fail, they fail open rather than shorting. Um, so I thought I would move on to the um, front panel, the bezel. For the moment, and I've taken the, the uh, lens out and cleaned it up. It looks pretty nice. Um, and now I'm going to start working on the, um, the bezel itself, cleaning up the metal and polishing the paint and all that. Also taking these tone controls out. And I thought I'd show you how they, how Zenith mounted those. I have this one loose already, but it's pretty clever. So I'll, uh, I'll put the uh, camera in a new place and, and show you how this, this goes together. Um, one of the gross things about this radio is the condition of these these um, tone switches. It's like, I don't know, almost 70 years of gunk dropped in there and finger oils and makeup and everything else. So they have to come out and get cleaned up. Um, and also the electronics. And there, you know, there's some passive components in here that need to be checked and replaced as necessary. And then the brass needs to be uh, cleaned up as well. So the way they put those in there is a nice sub-assembly business. This whole piece is on an assembly, including the switch. And that's held on by these, um, by these two little Hex head screws, so I'll pull those. these back in here so I don't lose them. Or as, as Larry from the Hills of Tennessee says, so the floor monsters don't eat them. And I agree with him. There are things on the floor that consume parts. They just 
go away. All right, so this is the part facing front. Um, this switch, these switch mechanisms are held in by these two screws right here. And this plate, at this uh, looking at this, um, it's kind of interesting. This appears to be a brass coating, with some of it running up into here. It's almost like they took the metal and dipped it right down to that line, which is possible, I guess. They just they electroplated it right up to that line, but didn't bother with the rest of it. Um, so that should clean up, I think. We'll find out. Anyway, those two screws come out, and then the switch pulls up the back, thusly. And that leaves you this piece to, to clean until your heart's content. And these two screws will go back in here so they don't get eaten. And there's the switch mechanism. And you can uh, disassemble it f further if you uh, have the courage or feel the need. I might, because those are so gross in there, I can hardly stand it. I mean, look at that crap down in there. Jeez. And I see some corrosion. Uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe you can see that. This green wire down in here it has some corrosion of some kind in it. So I'm going to expose this uh, little phenolic circuit board and uh, check the parts in there anyway. Clean up the, uh, the wipers and contacts for the switch and uh, clean up these really filthy knobs. I mean, they are gross. I'm surprised I'm even allowing myself to touch them. Uh, one interesting thing I've found on the schematic is, or not on the schematic, but on the parts list. Let me refresh my memory. Is what this, this this tone assembly is called. It has its own name and it has had its own part number. And it's right here. It's called the uh, Radio Organ Cable Assembly. And up here are the Radio Organ um, parts. So the rather fancy name for three switches and some resistors, but what the heck? Those marketing guys got nothing else to do anyway, right? Sit around and come up with fancy names. So I will disassemble this further and uh, give it a good cleaning, and I'll do the same to the other side. These are the switches that fit like that. Um, and the other side is just as filthy, so I'll clean that up as well. And
Um, I've dropped the uh, switch into a bath of ammonia and water. And look at that vile stuff coming off there. Fish it out of there without getting my fingers too wet. Yep. Yeah, they're cleaning up pretty nicely. However, I'm dissolving the lettering. So I've got to go rinse this off. There's no point in ruining this switch, is there? All right, the, um, the ammonia bath really cleaned it up nicely. I mean, it looks, it looks great after a rinse with the water. All the crud has come out of the crevices. However, the SS on the low base is gone. The SS on the base is starting to fade. The voice is still looking pretty good. So, um, Maybe a couple of seconds in ammonia followed by an immediate rinse will do. Maybe just soapy water. Uh, but an ammonia bath, if you do this, don't do this. Ammonia bath is a bad idea. So when we get to the, the uh, this one, well, as you can see, they clean up nicely. All right. Okay, here's the other side cleaned up, and um, boy, a little washing makes a huge difference. Uh, so what I'll do next is clean these contacts with a little deoxid wipe, and we'll do the same thing for these these contacts. Slide that wipe in between each one of these, but real quick. By the way, I. Uh, there was a resistor that was out of tolerance, a uh, was it 680, 580 ohm resistor, as I recall. And I don't have any. Um, and I decided this is just a stone tack, stack, or tone stack, rather. So it's going to make a little tiny difference. Not enough to uh, for me to be concerned with. Um, so I didn't replace it. And there we are, cleaned up radio organ. Um, looks pretty good. The uh, lens cleaned up nicely. The buttons actually cleaned up nicely. Um, the brass on the surround and behind here. Um, if it was brass, it was so thin a plate job that uh, it's gone now. So I couldn't, you can see still, it looks a little brassy right there. But very thin. And it turns out that to plate with brass, you need arsenic and some other nasty stuff. So it's not something that you do at home. So I can't replate these, or won't replate these at home. I could send them to a plating shop. They could do it for me. Um, but, you know, this radio is almost as old as I am. So that it look like it's, it's shine has come off. Mine certainly has. So, there we go. A restored radio organ. The makers of Johnson's Wax.